Hello for the YouTubes with Faye here, and welcome back to another weekly rant video. Today with me I have Baseball Lover and the Chew Dude. Salam. Salam. Hi. And on to the topic for this one, enough goofing around. So, the very first stage of the Shooty Italia was written yesterday. It was a team time trial, and once again it was a showdown between Omega Pharma Quickstep and Orca Greenwich. For the past three team time trials that those guys have been in, it's been between those two teams. What did you guys think about the team time trial of the Shooty Italia, the very first stage? It's actually very interesting. It was actually I wasn't expecting much from uh, the team time trial. I thought yeah, it's gonna be another team time trial. It might be boring. I didn't even watch it live. I, I had to record it because it's bad time zone. So I woke up and I actually watched the whole thing. I sat in bed for three hours of joy. Like it was not just because Orica won. I think the the race itself was entertaining. The way um I mean the views weren't too bad. Um it was just good. Like it wasn't that bad as a normal time troll. Um, we saw the damn mountain crash which kind of spiced it up a bit and uh, very very sad but we saw some uh, some winners such as uh, Orica Green Edge. BMC would have been really happy with that uh, for Kittel Evans in that position. Even though Rigberto Uran who's been super close as well he's, he's going to have a good position going in. But um, what did you guys think? Do you think that some riders got kind of are in a bad position now and they'll have to make a move like Rodriguez? Well, here's what I think is that um so basically unlike the two dude, this the restarting so late was actually really favorable to my time because I got home from school and it was still on. So I turned on my stream and literally it, the first thing I hear from the commentators is Dan Martin's on the ground. I'm like, "What? You have got to be kidding me." Like I literally turn it on and see the crash. It's the curse. It's it's like I am so frustrated. I, I can't even explain it. it it's like Such a I, I, for that there's bad, just though. there's just like beads of of frustration just like pouring out of my face. And it's like it it wasn't I hated team time trials. I hate team time I hate time trials. I hate watching time trials. They're boring than a regular road stage. I don't look forward to them. I hate team time trials even more. And then not only was it extremely boring for me, now my favorite rider crashes out. And I'm really getting frustrated with Dan Martin crashing out on every single goal he has because, you know, it's, it's, this isn't the first time. Okay, so you count down his last four main goals. Vuelta crashes out. Worlds crashes out. Okay, let's go to the next season. Ardenis crashes out of LBL. Jira crashes out on the first stage. And it's not even, to me, I'm not even angry that he crashed. Like, if he had just crashed like his other teammates, you know, he has to recover for a few stages, maybe go stage hunting later on, I couldn't care less, okay? I mean, I, I care. I wish he could have done good GC, but that would have been okay. It's a fact that out of all the guys on Garmin that crashed, out of every single rider in that, in that team time trial, he's the one that gets the broken collarbone and has to abandon the race. Like, come on. That's, that's just stupid, and it, it really frustrates me, and now also Heijadal three and a half minutes down, so that's going to be hard to come back from. It just really frustrates me. Yeah, we all it's follow just, you. Yeah. But back onto I mean, the topic where Chirut said the uh, other winners, i got to say a big winner in that stage was uh, Nara Quintana taking 40 seconds on Rodriguez. Just just mm -hmm. uh, letting that out there. But what are you saying, Chirut, dude? Like... I know a lot of people who think that uh, was a, it's Orica Green and she was definitely the strongest. And at the end, they didn't really win by that much. If you look at it, it was only about four seconds off or five seconds off Omega and seven seconds behind the BMC. That's not very much. I mean, Omega went down on paper. They didn't have the best team. They didn't have Tony Martin. They didn't have their normal crew of, I mean, just gun time trialers. And it really shows that it's not really... Uh, how good you are on paper, how good your time trials are. It's it's more about the chemistry you guys got going, and it, it's shown with these two teams that they're the the main two teams like that this challenge for every single team time trial there is. And I was uh, I'm sure a lot of people were shocked with Omega Farmer's performance. I mean, they, their odds were really yeah. unlikely to win that stage, and they got close. Omega so. Sprint Road is it Pataki, uh, the old uh, Pataki. The old guy the old coming back to riding, uh, what's it called, the Shirt Italia, actually has a chance of taking over the Maglia Rosa today in today's stage. Yeah, he bet he won't. Full credit to him. He 
made a massive final turn. Um, yes. He just cranked it up at the end. I was, wow. Well, I feel and, like uh, that's very impressive that a guy of his age can do that well. But speaking about sprinters, a big sprinter, or the German national champion, Andre Greibel, came out this week and openly criticized young sprinters like Nasser Bohani and saying that they are a danger to the sport because they... Just specifically in Bohani's case, he doesn't know the difference between boxing and cycling. That's because Nasser Bohani has a past in boxing. And these guys, they don't ride with their head, they ride with their heart. And that's di- that's uh, dangerous for other riders. But what do you guys think of this accusation? I completely agree. FDJ, in, in particular, have, have shown that they uh, their young sprinters don't really understand how how uh, how chaotic... A sprint can be and how dangerous it is to simply, you know, cut people off and, 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 you know, try to wrestle them out of positions and stuff. You you can't do that. And, I, you know, there's been many, many samples of, of that. And I've, I, I'm always going to remember the Tour de Suisse last year with Arnaud Damar. That's just what I'm going to remember because it was Tyler Farah that got, you know, the, the end of it. There, there are two guys fighting for position. Uh, Arnard Jamar's behind him, and he just kind of like cuts through this gap. Hits, hits. He hit um Farah's handlebar. Farah has to like regroup, loses like a hundred meters. You can't just, you can't just do that. He just dove in like that, and, and it, it's not. It's that that could have ended so much, so much worse if if Farah hadn't been able to regain control. Which I mean, honestly, Farah crashes a lot, so I was expecting him to fall there. If he hadn't, that could have caused like a massive pileup, and you can't just do that. Also, we saw you know Demar like blocking people earlier this year. You can't just like move. You got to keep your line. That's how cycling works, even if not in PCM. You know, that's how cycling works, and I, I've definitely seen it. And you know, it's it's a big move for Greipel to call them out like that. But I mean, I agree with it to an extent. Yeah. What do you think, Judy? Yeah. I mean, it's certainly shocking to see someone like Andre Greipel. His um, his qualities calling someone out. That's not normal. I mean, it, there must be something definitely going wrong. But again, cycling is one of the most uh, dangerous sport. It's one of the most toughest sports, and uh, tough guys win races. But um, yeah, obviously. You can only go to extent in boxing people out in sprints, and sprints are really hard fought. I mean, people don't really understand how difficult it is. Like, it's easy to watch from TV, but probably inside the peloton, you, you can recall like guys reading books and stuff like that. I've recalled um, guys saying how chaotic it is. They wouldn't even go near the front, and uh, even um, some other riders not even wanting to go to the front because they have children, and that's how dangerous the, the race is sometimes. Yeah. So. Um, Fun fact, obviously, actually. Oh, go. yeah, obviously, some young riders may be more prone to this because they've only been in the peloton for a short time, maybe. Mm-hmm. But fun fact is that uh, most people on this channel know Elia Viviani, and not too long ago there was a certain race where Elia Viviani had a beef <laughs> with someone, and he decided to take it out of him, and it was Andrea Guardini. And what he did is he's, he took both of them out completely out of the race, and he just went and completely blocked him. Uh, you'll probably see a screenshot on screen right now. It's from the cycling up video. But Andre Guardini and Viviani is all the way to the left. And Viviani just purposely pushed him all the way out there just because he had a beef with him. And that just shows that how hot-headed some of these younger sprinters can be. So that's mm. one case scenario that most people can do, should know about. But yeah. speaking about Viviani's hot-headed boss, young sprinters, we have been speaking so much about Arnaud Demar. Arnaud Demar has actually been getting results this last week because there is the Fort George de Dunkirk, also known as the Four Days at Dunkirk. And uh, Arnaud Demar has won every single stage of the last two editions except two. And that's uh, so far s- nine stages, I think. Yes, last year was six stages, so it's nine stages, and he's won seven stages out of those. So he's been really dominant. What do you guys think about this year's version of the four days at Dunkirk? Mm. Sure, you can go, yeah. It's pretty much just racing against amateurs, really. I looked at the start list. I, I saw Arnold de Mar one. I'm like, wow, you won the stage. <laughs> I looked at the start list, and I literally didn't know any other riders other than the FDJ riders from that race. Like, it is just, well, <laughs> this weird guys. Just, didn't know much of them, really. Mm. Literally, anyone could have predicted these results. Like, every single sprint, DeMar wins. Then the one, like, harder harder stage, Chavanel wins. Like, come on. <laughs> hey, Michael Valgren was close to winning that stage. 
I was yeah, but... cheering on him, and he got just he got beat by a tube length. I mean, like, yeah, I don't so... know, I don't know where was Breschel, where uh, was Breschel there? I, I expected, I expected a win from Breschel though. Nah, he hasn't done anything. I would never bet on Breschel if I. Had nah, Breschel's Breschel's pretty pretty amazing. Nah, I, I wouldn't say so. But uh, Merkov got fourth, so it's a big day for the Danish riders. Michael Valgren is a, a Neo Pro who uh, last year, or the, for the last two years, has won the under-23 version of liege Piton liege or La Flash Vallon, something like that. I think it was liege Piton liege He's really been doing good, and he's up in the up and up, so he's a guy to watch out for in the future. I mean, so, uh, well, how much have you actually heard of uh, Michael Valgren before? Do you, do you know anything Never about heard. him? No. no, I knew that he was a Danish guy no, that okay. rode bikes. Because like, there's another Danish guy called Matt Peterson, who is also a puncher, oh, Michael yes, Valgren. He is mm -hmm. also I've tearing up the under-23... Like, he won the, the period of bid last three years. So, the the the, the under-23 scene is dominated by Danish guys. So, hmm. enough with the results for this week. On to the Tweet of the Week, which I know a bunch of you guys like. And to introduce the Tweet of the Week this year, or this week, I think it's uh, it's only Baseball Lover's job. It's only in his right place yeah, yeah, yeah. to introduce it. I, I think that uh, the Tweet of the Year, I don't know how we're going to pick that. That's going to be that's gonna be pretty tough at the end of this year. But, anyway. The tweet of the week comes from Matt Rabin, um, and it was retweeted by Dan Martin, and says, to me to at Dan Martin 86 this morning, what are you going to do today, mate? And the reply was, might go play some tennis. Dan Martin has a broken collarbone. <laughs> if anyone ever played tennis with a broken collarbone before, you know how much that would hurt. Yeah, that's not going to happen, but it, it's really cool to see that even after two crashes and his biggest season goals, Dan Martin's got some humor in him. Well, we saw last week's Tweet of the Week with Dan Martin and the Mario Kart. Yeah. So the guy is... Yeah, well, Dan he Martin is just... <laughs> featuring away in two of the last Tweet of the Weeks. Oh. Maybe you guys <laughs> can over. find another one next I week. I might be choosing the last two Tweet of the Weeks. It's, I might have. It's the Dan, but... Dan Martin rant. <laughs> I, I'm gonna you start that on my channel, the Dan Martin weekly rant about how what which race he crashed in this week. So how did Dan Martin do this week? Nothing. Okay, okay. Five what tweets from Dan Martin are there this week? <laughs> we I mean, this week Dan Martin honesty. said, "Out training on my bike." What an amazing tweet right there. <laughs> really, really, uh, really develops the ideas here. What are you trying to say to you? For us looking for tweets, it's actually very difficult. So if you guys find any good tweets, uh, we'll we'll give you guys a shout out and let us know what tweets you guys see. Because I was looking through some tweets today, and I was going a bit mental. So make sure you guys, if you guys see any funny ones, link below. Well, it was either this one or it's the uh, like the steep hill video or uh, uh, yeah steep hill picture where the entire team crashed, where it looks so chaotic and so funny. Because I still believe whoever that was who made the Superman post. That's like the best position I've ever seen anyone in a crash. Like, he had both arms straight out into the air. And I gotta say, that looked really hilarious. Even though most people are telling me that I'm evil because I think some crashes look funny, but... It is. It's completely evil. With so it many is. crashes, if you don't, if you can't laugh of them, then how can you enjoy the sport? But how is that a funny crash? It's not Just a funny because crash, but there are parts Superman. of it that are... Like, it's well, kind of funny. Did you laugh at the damn mountain crash? The the yes, but on the edge? No, the one at the team time trial just recently. Well, I didn't laugh of him as injury, but I laughed when it happened because. Well, I can tell you, I nearly fell off my bed laughing. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's really nice to no, know. I'm not the, you guys I'm not are the meanest Satanist. guy here. I'm not the meanest guy here. You guys are all Satanists, and. Just wait, because they're like, just... their full saying will crash at some point. Hopefully, full saying will just like break both well, of his collarbones now. I guess it'll be it'll also be called karma when uh, Cattle Evans is gonna do Jack Squat in this uh, this year's uh, this oh, year's okay. uh, Should you tell you? Well, well, I can tell you one of the the was it co-hosts or the host of the SBS broadcast when I'm watching. He's it's actually Hank Vogels and uh, he oh he's the director of Drag Pack and he. He reckons Cadell Evans is in cherry ripe form, so watch out. He yeah, has to say that though, because he's part of Australian sport. If Cadell Evans wins, Drapex gets a big boost. So he has to hope for Cadell Evans to win. He's so. in cherry ripe form. Oh, it's some kind that. of candy that I don't that nobody else knows about. <laughs> exactly, it's Australian sayings. Who oh, you guys don't have cherry ripe? No. Nope. It's a chocolate. It's, it's a chocolate. Very I famous. It was some sort of fruit. It's huge. It's by Cadbury. Do you know what Hershey's you is? Yeah, do you know what Hershey's is? Probably you the same what? thing. 
It's it's amazing. It's a good. It's great chocolate. <laughs> chocolate talk. Exactly the chocolate weekly. I don't even like ben chocolate. Martin's That's the ironic tweet. thing. <laughs> But on to the topic that most of you guys are probably here for, if you uh, follow our channels, the PCM talk. We have an entire subdivision just talking about PCM this week. So first of all, PCM released some uh, unofficial screenshots on Amazon. They've been really good at leaking things on Amazon by accident. Like last week, we actually had the official cover for the next game. It was the official cover that we showed two weeks ago, and now they came out with some screenshots. And two dudes said before the RAND that they changed nothing. Well, I kind of disagree since these pictures show that they put a bunch of buildings in it, and that's something. I mean, like some of these, some of these screenshots are actually okay. If you want, I can send a link in the, in the description below so you can go check them out yourself. What do you guys think of these screenshots? Anything that impressed you, or some anything that disappointed you? Did you catch anything out of the ordinary? Mm, everything disappointed me. Like screen, like those buildings, like anyone could have done. Like it looks like PCM Daily could do that, and um. Sure, they might have done something. There's no drastic changes that I see. Um, but that might be a good thing if there's no drastic changes. It might mean they've worked on the gameplay, which I think everyone's looking forward to. And that's my only wish. They just work on the career mode, the gameplay, the online maybe, and fix up a lot of the bugs they have. So that's my only wish. I mean, the, the photos, sure, they look nice. There's a couple of them that are controversial because the bikes are... Kind of floating in midair. Well, <laughs> so what do you, you see, think? like Hans Ball said, you know, Back to the Future Two next year, they had hoverboards. So we're kind of got we're getting close to that point now where you got to kind of advance the times here. Otherwise, we're never going to make that deadline. PC fourteen editions now with hoverboards. Now with right, hoverbikes, well, yes. Well, with the modding ability, they're they're like uh, hinting at we might see hoverboards. No, well, I think in if no, you do career mode and you simulate to, you have to ride. if you in simulate to 2020, ability. you're gonna be able to float. The more years you go, the higher your bike goes <laughs> off the ground. Might be an April Fool's joke, you know. Piece, like Football Manager, if anyone here plays Football Manager, once you reach uh, April first, uh, it comes up with an April Fool's. It's like a Saudi Arabian oil man has decided to take over your club. He has injected 200 million dollars into your club. You can now spend that buying whoever you want. Next day, April Fools. <laughs> it's. Uh, I wish the game would do something like that. Saudi Arabian man has bought your club. It's kind of funny though. It's. I find it hilarious. It's one of the joys to playing Football Manager. It's got the these small features that just makes your day better. PCM is lacking those, but they're adding it with the auto feature. Yes. Like the auto feature, if you don't want to play a stage, you can just auto and lose the stage when the AI tries to control your team. I mean, the only well, way, the only way the AI ever wins is if you're the strongest guy. Anyway. The way I think about it is, you know, you say that there could be modding capabilities to, you know, get the hover bikes, but I think what they're actually trying to do is they know that we can have modding in order to get the bikes back on the road, so they're going the extra level and giving us the hoverboard straight away. <laughs> so, <laughs> reverse psychology right there. <laughs> make them work for it. Make them earn the game. So just give it to them. Let's make them earn it. They got to... Find some sort of way to edit back the yeah. small bikes, and they'll probably do a better job than we would, so it's okay. It's a win-win situation. But for all of those who are not on PCM Daily, they'll just be playing with hoverboards. <laughs> Poor guys. Uh, speaking about uh, PCM, the console game, the Tour de France game, uh, they made some adjustments to it. The team comms, or on the dev blog, they made a big section about team comms. You know how you used to uh, give orders to your teammate? Now you can also see their green, re red, and yellow levels. You can't... You can uh, put people in the groups, like if you want to have a mountain group, you can mark them yellow. Kind of like when you uh, do training or do uh, season planning, you can put people in different groups. You can do the same thing like in-game now, so if you want to give one order to multiple guys, you just have to put them in one group, and that way you do that. What do you guys think about this uh, Tour de France game? Any of you planning on buying it this summer? No. Yes. 100% going to. Never played the console game. Really want to now that I have a PS4 and it's coming out on PS4. So, you know, it, it's one of those games where it's like, it's so expensive for what it should be, obviously. And it's probably going to be a crap game, but I, I, I was watching, like, gameplays of it, like playthroughs. And it's just like, I feel like I want to play this game. Like, I have a natural draw to it. That's, a, that's what happens when I first saw PCM, 
when I first looked up cycling game and PCM came up and I watched some gameplay, I felt drawn to it. Like, I just need this game right now. And so, I, because, you know, I hadn't really ever envisioned a cycling game like PCM as a noob scrub to the cycling world. I envisioned a game like, uh, you know, TDF. Mm. So, um, yeah. Cool. Well, don't you feel well, you lose interest in the game, though? Because once the TDF is over... What's the playback potential? It's very low. Mm, yeah, you're not going to play much. The DLCs, you might, you might get interested Criterium in the... Criterium International. <laughs> Criterium that International. That is such a joke. Why don't they just add the Shooty Italia and the Walter Svani as DLCs? Then there's actually some sort of playback. No, 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 no. you misunderstand. Value. That's that's work. That's different. You can't do that. Oh, they, they don't they, want money. They, they, they want to sit on the couches, you know, um, sign night guys. No, they want to work on Pro Rugby Manager. That's what they want. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think the biggest turn-off to this game is, well, for us, I think, a lot of the community as well, is you got to buy a next-gen console. I mean, 90% no, of the don't. people... It's on PS3 it, and Xbox 360 too. Well, if you want the full version yeah, of the game, you have to buy yeah, it. But if, yeah. Isn't it the same <laughs> game, though? No. It, it, it feels like you're getting a less of a game if you're not getting it on the next-gen console, because they're probably building the game for the next-gen console, mm-hmm. so for you getting a backdated version, it's probably not the best. You might as well get this year's edition, and it probably won't be much different. For those playing um, NBA, though, that's the same case. Like, NBA yeah. on uh, or 2K on, on PCM 3 and uh, Xbox 360, it's not the same game as next-gen, and it's going to be the same case for... Well, the, uh, yeah, but I don't game. think that's the case for TDF, because Cyanide would have to put work into making a next-gen version then, and they just don't. They just don't want to. Well, technically, last year, they just ported... Uh, like they should. Why, I don't, one thing I don't understand is why don't they just port the TDF game onto PC and add it as a, as a feature on the, in the game? Like, how because, difficult because because they need because then you you wouldn't get the same sales as either. You want to have some kind of draw for people to get both. What? Mm. Come on! I mean, the potential on both. PC is so much better than the potential on. Uh, on the P- I wish, I wish they would transform the console game into a be a pro or something like that, but they're never going to, and they really should. Because it's too, too much work, and it would take ten years yeah. of uh, yep. planning and bug fixing and career storyline, whatever. It'd be really tough. But now that we're all complaining about Pro Cycling Manager, a new game that's supposed to come out in 2015, and the screenshots are coming out now. The official homepage for Cycling Manager Evolved is coming out real soon. I saw the, the developers talking about that, but. Some screenshots have been released, and I gotta say, the quality of those screenshots really wants me to play that game. It, it makes me want to play that game. We saw, according to Chudu, the Dogma is a bike. And we saw a helmet, both really great quality, better than PCM will ever be. And what do you guys there, think there about was Second Manager? Five hundred tw- trillion quadrillion polygons in that thing. Oh my god, it looks so beautiful. And and my the monitor I was looking at it on isn't even HD, and yet it still looked like. Popped hmm. out at me like brilliance. That has to be like. I want to see the oh my rider God, models. I want to see the actual riders, how they look on that bike. I want to see the stage. How does that look? I mean, these guys are doing one hell of a job from what I can see. And I, I know that you were skeptical, baseball lover, in the beginning of this yeah. project. You were thinking, ah, it's never going to be anything. But I really think they're going to get through this because they have to. I hope it is. And the game has never like PCM fourteen or thirteen has never been this bad. Like it's. This, for the franchise, is going downhill. It's not going anywhere specific. What do you think, Chief? Like, I wasn't... Uh, me too, I was on the ba- like baseball level. I didn't think this game was going to go anywhere. I was skeptical if it was even going to be released. And to see the amount of work they put in, it certainly shows that they're the real deal. They're the next big thing. And looking at those photos, they're amazing. They're going to have to make... That game is probably going to make me spend like a thousand dollars on a new computer. Like, yeah, I don't have enough money to buy a new next gen console. But look at that game. <laughs> I want to buy yeah. a new uh, computer now, like, to supply that because it's going to be really fun and I'm hyped. I want to see ha- like all the different things. They also added icons for like the career mode, which uh, this game will only be career mode. It'll be a hundred percent career mode. It's the only thing they're focusing on. They showed some icons and different things. And it's nice to see the community coming together and really working well in this project. And I just hope that this game is well made the very first year they release it. Because what I fear is, if the first year they release it, it's uh, just as buck, buck fold as uh, or back, buck as uh, PCM is. People will just go away from the franchise again. Like they will just 
Screw for Cycling Manager Evolved, go back to PCM, at least there's one less bug there or something like that. What do you guys think so, about that? So when's the release actually? 2015. Schedule in 2015, uh, like uh, second oh. quarter or something like that, like right when the Tour de France starts. Like they have a schedule on their uh, thread on PCM Daily. It's like this year, this quarter, this year, this quarter, this year, this quarter, be one of the things released. Uh, the the, the uh, website was scheduled to be out in the first quarter of this year. So it was scheduled out to be from like January to March. But we haven't seen it yet. So, but they're, they're saying they have some issues. But I really want to see once well, they release it. Their lead developer, one of their lead developers, besides the actual guy, uh, just bailed. Who was so that? So they actually? got delayed. Uh, I don't know. Some, one of his friends was like a programmer, and he bailed. Oh, that sucks. I know T. Foden is putting in a lot of his uh, spare time in this project, and I have a bunch of respect for the guy because what he's been doing for the Titan DB before, and what he's doing now for this uh, game. He's he's really a hell of a guy, and I hope he wins like PCM Daily Member of the Year if this really. Per- oh, no, he yeah. won't. Maybe we can get him on the weekly rant. You never know what you're going to see. So uh, yes, that show. would be. You could get anybody on the weekly rant. We oh, could yeah, get like Dan Martin, Martin on the weekly rant. We should ask him. So how did you? Uh, how your tennis match go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone's having yeah. an issue. I'm watching the real show in Italia, and someone. Uh, oh, it's only Bjorn Thoreau. Never mind. <laughs> Can't tell oh, me. I thought it was. I could have sworn it was going to be Hedgedal or Farah. No, but because uh, how dare are... they stay in the race and not be injured? The conditions though are so terrible. Like it's raining so bad that even the cameras have trouble picking up who's who. Everyone is yeah. wearing their uh, their jerseys. Oh, that was a small crash actually. Who was? Yeah, so uh... the next couple of stages at the Giro expect some crashes. Expect some big names to miss out and maybe cuts if there's like echelons or. Something yeah, the like wind that. In, so. uh, in Ireland is terrible. The, in, the wind in Northern Ireland is terrible. Actually, it was a Garmin shot rider crashing. Just the funny fact to add. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that cost it. I don't know who it is who was down there. Oh my god! Like, it was. It was no. It, it was Farah because he he might actually get a top ten. So now it has to be him that crashes. Sure. That's but, the way it works, guys. That's all our topic we had to talk about this week. Hope you guys enjoyed the weekly rant. This might be the first weekly rant we end before the video uh, before the stage is over. But there's not much more to talk about. We got through all the things we wanted to talk about. PCM was very... Uh, the, the news from PCM this week was very uh, in, it's insightful into the new game. Psychoman involved. The screenshots got got me hooked in specific, uh, specifically. And also, there wasn't many races to talk about. Next week, we're going to have seven stages of the Shirty detail to talk about. So make sure that next week, come yeah, back. Yeah, next week's going to be a big one. Next week is going to be a big one. We'll be hearing from Dan Martin then. And thank you guys for watching. Go check out Chudu's videos, uh, and go check out Baseball Loves videos, go on SoundCloud, go on uh, Podbean, go on PCM Daily, wherever we post these things, make sure that this podcast grows with you guys. Thank you guys for watching. And Hashtag we'll Filler Sexy. We'll be seeing you guys around. Yay.